This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. As Congress begins its new session today, one of its top Republicans has acknowledged he once addressed a gathering of white supremacists and neo-Nazis. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise has confirmed reports he spoke at a 2002 convention of Euro, that's European American Unity and Rights Organization. Euro is founded by David Duke, a former KKK leader and perhaps the country's most notorious white supremacist. Scalise was serving as a Louisiana state representative at the time. The news was first reported last month by law student Lamar White, Jr., on the website sendlamar.com. Scalise told the New Orleans Times-Picayune he does not recall the conference and, quote, didn't know who all these groups were. For anyone to suggest I was involved with a group like that is insulting and ludicrous. Scalise did apologize for his speech, saying, quote, is it, it was a mistake I regret, and I emphatically impose the divisive racial and religious views groups like these hold. On Monday, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest said it's up to Scalise's GOP colleagues to decide if he faces consequences. Ultimately, it's the responsibility of individual members of the House Republican Conference to decide who they want to uh, elect as their, as a leader of their conference. Uh, and uh, certainly who those elected leaders are says a lot about who the conference is and what their priorities and values are. Uh, and they're going to have to answer for themselves uh, whether or not elevating somebody who described himself as uh, David Duke without the baggage uh, it sort of reinforces the kind of message that the House Republican Conference wants to project. As the House Majority Whip, Steve Scalise, is the number three Republican in the House of Representatives, many colleagues have rallied to his defense. These include Congresswoman Mia Love of Utah, the first black woman elected to Congress as a Republican and one of the 74 new GOP members to be sworn in today. On Sunday, Mia Love spoke about Scalise to ABC's This Week. These groups are awful, and the last thing I want to do is give them any sort of publicity or credibility. And I can say, as far as I'm concerned, with Representative Scalise, he has been absolutely wonderful to work with. He's been very helpful for me, for me, and he has had um, the support of his colleagues. Does it hurt the image of the Republican Party, and should he remain in leadership? I believe he should remain in leadership. There's one quality that he has that I think is very important in leadership, and that's humility. And he's actually shown that in this case, um, and has apologized. And I think that. We need to move on and get the work of the American people done. That's the uh, congresswoman from Utah, Mia Love, where she will be when she's sworn in today. A longtime advisor to former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke confirmed he personally invited Scalise to speak to the 2002 gathering of white supremacists. Kenny Knight told The Washington Post Scalise was his neighbor and came as a favor to him and didn't know about racial views of the organizers. He said, quote, he agreed, believing it was going to be neighbors, friends and family. He saw me not as David Duke's guy, but as the president of our civic association. Well, for more, we head south to speak to Mark Potok. He's senior fellow at the Southern Poverty Law Center, joining us from Montgomery, Alabama. His latest piece headline, Steve Scalise's denials are not believable. Welcome back to Democracy Now! Mark, why not? Why aren't they believable? Well, thanks for having me, for starters. I mean, they are wildly unbelievable. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, when Steve Scalise uh, was in his 20s and a state representative, uh, that was the peak of uh, David Duke's sort of heyday. Uh, Duke ran for Senate uh, in 1990. He ran for governor in 1991. In both cases, uh, he got the majority of the white vote uh, in Louisiana. Uh, and it was a huge international story. Moreover, uh, Kenny Knight, the person you mentioned as inviting uh, Scalise, Mark, for, uh, young this people, event. for young people who don't know who David Duke is, can you talk about his history before he ran for public office? Sure. Duke, uh, early on, uh, formed a major Klan group called the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, when he was uh, still at LSU, at Louisiana State University, as a student, he paraded uh, in one instance in a full neo-Nazi getup, uh, carrying signs uh, having to do with the Holocaust and so on. Uh, he later uh, tried to shed his Klan past in the sense that he formed new organizations. One of them was called the National Association for the Advancement of White People. Uh, later on, he created something called No Fear, which uh, then changed its name to Euro. Uh, that was his latest uh, iteration. During uh, those contests, especially the 1991 run for governor, uh, a huge amount of reporting was done about Duke's 
uh, ties to various neo-Nazi uh, groups and beliefs and so on, and it became very clear uh, that it was simply false that he had put these uh, beliefs behind him. Uh, while he was campaigning, he was still selling Holocaust denial materials uh, from his bookstore and so on. So I think it is certainly fair to say that uh, David Duke was then and remains today uh, the best known white supremacist in the United States. Mark, uh, I want to turn to a clip from a video promoting a 2005 Euro conference uh, three years after Scalise spoke. It begins with David Duke, followed by two speakers expressing white supremacist views. This meeting is attended by leaders of European American organizations dedicated to our heritage and freedom from all over the European and American world. One advantage we have over the Jewish supremacists who oppose our people's awakening is that their growth curve, either in numbers or power, is severely restricted. Ours is not. We have the advantage because we are the white race. We have the ingenuity and the creativity to overcome anything that they can put up against them. That is from a uh, 2005 video about the Euro conference uh, where uh, Steve Scalise spoke three years earlier. Now, in a 2002 post uh, from when Steve Scalise spoke, uh, written on the neo-Nazi website Stormfront, a, comment a commenter who said he attended the Euro conference praised Scalise's speech. Using the name Alsace Hebert, the comment. The commenter wrote, quote, Representative Scalise brought into sharp focus the dire circumstances pervasive in many important underfunded needs of the community at the expense of graft within the Housing and Urban Development Fund, an apparent giveaway to a selective group based on race. Two years later, the same commenter expressed excitement that Scalise would run for Congress. He wrote, quote, Those that attended the Euro conference in New Orleans will recall that Scalise was a speaker offering his support for issues that are of concern to us. Mark Potok, can you co talk about Stormfront and what the Zero Conference is, and, of course, the likelihood that uh, Scalise didn't know what it was? Well, Stormfront, first of all, is the largest white supremacist web forum in the world. It's run by a former Alabama Klan leader, a man named Don Black. It's a huge uh, forum. It has, or it claims, uh, to have something like 300,000 registered members, and not all of them Americans. It's really quite something. Uh, Euro, at the time, uh, really uh, was, uh, in a sense, the most important white supremacist organization around, or it was certainly trying to be that. Uh, it had collected uh, many of the better-known uh, leaders of uh, what they would call the white nationalist movement, uh, with David Duke at the core as the sort of head. Uh, you know, uh, to go uh, to the believability of Scalise's claims, uh, it's, I think, important to say that Kenny Knight, the person who invited him, uh, has been lying through this entire episode. We know that because, among other things, Kenny Knight uh, made a later claim to the New Orleans Times-Picayune that what, Duke, what Scalise had attended was not Duke's meeting at all, was not the Euro meeting at all. He had attended a homeowners association meeting earlier that morning in the same space. Uh, he went on to say, Kenny Knight went on to say to the reporters, uh, that he, uh, Scalise, and Kenny Knight then left. That is false. We know that because we have a picture, a photograph of Kenny Knight at the Euro conference giving the speech uh, that was published, in fact, in the David Duke report. So uh, th there's been a lot of effort on the part of uh, Kenny Knight uh, and others to essentially muddy the trail. Uh, but uh, as I said at the beginning, I think it's simply not believable that a politician uh, like Steve Scalise at that time could possibly not have known uh, what this meeting was. He knew Kenny Knight. Uh, David Duke has himself explained in the last few days uh, that uh, Scalise knew Knight as Duke's campaign manager. So he knew that he was going to a Duke event. Uh, we've had uh, one of our own staff members, uh, Heidi Byrick, attend uh, later Euro meetings. These meetings are draped with all kinds of racist uh, banners and flags and so on. Uh, so I think the whole tale uh, is nothing but that, a fairy tale. You also write about, in terms of was it known what Euro represented at the time, <clears throat> that the 
Iowa Cubs, a triple-A team, were planning to stay at the Best Western Landmark Hotel in Metairie, Louisiana, at the same time that the National Euro Convention was taking place, and that their, um, the local New Orleans team that was arranging the visiting team's accommodations actually switched hotels in part because Euro was there. That's right. And this made the local papers, in addition, uh, spokesman for the hotel itself uh, took the trouble to go on uh, local television uh, and say that uh, the hotel did not in any way agree with the views of Euro. They hadn't understood what the organization was uh, when it booked and so on. So there was a lot of public uh, putting of distance uh, between various uh, organizations and people uh, and the Duke organization. So I think that simply goes to the fact that Euro was well known locally. Uh, as an organization, as an organ of David Dukes. Well, Mark, former KKK leader David Duke says Scalise is being singled out. Speaking to Fusion, Duke said of the 2002 meeting, quote, he was just going there, obviously, to tell voters about some of his initiatives on some tax matters. If Scalise is going to be crucified, if Republicans want to throw Steve Scalise to the woods, then a lot of them better be looking over their shoulders. Duke suggested he could release a list of names of politicians he is connected to. In a follow-up interview with CNN, Duke said he would name names from both main political parties. You said this week that if he's crucified, I think that was your yeah. word choice, yeah. then you're going to name names. What yeah. are we talking about? I would, I would name names of any Democrat. And I know some Democrats and Republicans in the House of Representatives who, who tried, in fact, urged me to support them. In other words, you're saying there are members of Congress today who have, have relationships with have you. Have had relationships. Have, but they, they, they choose to so, keep those private. And that's fine. And you honor and that. And I respect somebody's privacy. But you'll call them out. But I would call them out if they be hypocritical. That was David Duke speaking to CNN. Mark Potok, what do you make of that, him claiming he has ties to politicians from both parties, Democrats and Republicans? Well, I think he said, and, and said correctly, that he had had ties to them. I think that's certainly uh, not true now, or at least uh, it's very unlikely. At the time, uh, around uh, the turn of the century, turn of the millennium, uh, there was quite a lot of contact between politicians and various white supremacist groups. Another uh, big group was the Council of Conservative Citizens, the group that Trent Lott, the former Senate Majority Leader, got into trouble uh, over endorsing and speaking to and so on. So I, I think it's probably true that there were a number of politicians in Louisiana. Duke had a real constituency. Uh, he earned in various elections 600,000 votes, uh, white votes, and in another 700,000 white votes. Uh, so there were certainly politicians uh, who were interested, if not in David Duke personally, then his constituency. So, you know, we don't know uh, what was in Steve Scalise's head in 2002 when he went to attend the Euro conference. Mark. Uh, we don't know whether he had uh, similar views or was simply uh, trolling for votes. Mark, according to the longtime Louisiana political reporter Stephanie Grace, Steve Scalise once described himself to her as, quote, David Duke without the baggage. In an interview with The New York Times, Grace recalled her first meeting with Scalise, saying, quote, he told me he was like David Duke without the baggage. I think he meant he supported the same policy ideas as David Duke, but he wasn't David Duke, that he didn't have the same feelings about certain people as David Duke did. Uh, can you comment on this? And finally, what you think should happen? I mean, right now, Steve Scalise is the number three power in the House of Representatives as it begins today. He's the House Majority Whip. Well, first of all, uh, it wasn't a, a one-off claim. Um, you know, as, as to what uh, should happen to Scalise today, I mean, I think that the Republican Party, uh, if it is being remotely honest in terms of uh, trying to reach out to minorities, which it has made an awful lot of noise about in the last couple of years, uh, it seems obvious that they ought to get rid of Scalise. Uh, I think he is being given a pass uh, because we don't happen to have video uh, of whatever it was that he said uh, at the Euro meeting, uh, because there's a little bit of shakiness in exactly uh, when he spoke and so on. Uh, and so he's being allowed to uh, get away with this. 
you know, I mean, to me, uh, if the Republicans uh, have any kind of uh, uh, earnestness, uh, you know, in their repeated statements that they're looking to enlarge uh, what is becoming a narrower and narrower party, uh, this would be the move to make, but they seem quite unwilling to make it. And, you know, I think part of the reason for that uh, is that Steve Scalise is in the Republican House leadership uh, in part as a kind of outreach uh, to uh, Tea Party Republicans and so on. Uh, you know, after all, Scalise is a man who, uh, on a couple of different occasions, uh, was a very lonely voter uh, against the Martin Luther King holiday uh, back in 1999 and 2004 as well. He was one of three uh, in one case and one of six uh, in another case, uh, representatives who voted against that bill. Mark Potok, I want to thank you for being with us, senior fellow at the Southern Poverty Law Center, where his latest piece for their Hate Watch blog is, deadline, is headlined, Steve Scalise's Denials Are Not Believable. We'll link to it at democracynow.org. When we come back, we're going to California to talk about Mexico and some new revelations about who is involved in the, um, in the disappearance of 43 students. Stay with us.